Thank you so much for joining me today for a discussion about eating for optimal performance and optimal health. I want to start by saying congratulations to you for taking the initiative to sign up for Couch to 5K and uh, by participating in these recordings. So my name is Jeanette Shively. I am a registered dietitian. And I do do some work with Easter Seal, seeing uh, patients with the early intervention program, as well as some of the staff of uh, Easter Seals. I am also going to be participating in the 5K. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys out on the track and helping make sure that you're getting all the information you need to help feel successful on that big day. So today we're going to be talking about eating for optimal performance, and this also goes hand in hand with eating for optimal health. So we're going to spend the next 30 to 40 minutes zipping through some slides, and if you have questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information will be on the last slide. Awesome. So let's get started with what we are going to be reviewing today. We're going to start by reviewing the four R's of eating. We're then going to be looking at aerobic and anaerobic exercise, how they differ, and how to fuel and hydrate for both types of exercise. At the end, we're going to do a quick summary, and I'll talk a little bit about how I can help you not only get to your finish line for the 5K, but also feel good every day. So we're going to start with the, five, the four R's of eating, and those four R's are the right foods, the right amounts, the right combinations, and the right times. Oftentimes, this is where people go a little awry because they think they're eating the right foods, but it may not be the right amount or the timing may be off, and therefore it's not helping them with their goals or helping them fuel properly. So we'll be looking at the right foods in terms of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, and looking a little bit more about how the amounts and combinations can help with your goals. So we're going to dive right into the first of the three macronutrients I mentioned on the previous slide, carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, unfortunately, have had some bad press recently. However, carbohydrates are our body's primary and favorite source of fuel. It's the macronutrient that breaks down into sugar quickly, which is important when we are doing really intense exercise or we need to move our bodies very quickly. Carbohydrates are also important for brain cells, and we need to make sure we're getting at least 100 grams of carbohydrate every day to give our brain the fuel it needs to do our work, solve problems at home, whatever activities you may be doing, you need some carbohydrates to help with that. Carbohydrates also help prevent muscle breakdown. As we're exercising, if we don't have enough carbohydrates available, our body can break down muscle, which is a real bummer for people who are looking to lean out or who are looking to bulk up. And carbohydrates break down really quickly, which is why the combination piece when you're having carbohydrates is extra important. So where do these carbohydrates come from and which sources are going to be best? Well, carbohydrates come from fruit, from grains, from beans, peas, certain vegetables. They're also found in more processed foods like sodas, processed snacks, uh, sweet, sweet foods. We want to steer more towards the whole grains, fruits, and vegetables as the, basic, the, the basis of our carbohydrate intake. Whenever we're having carbohydrates, it's particularly important to have them with a protein or a fat to help slow down how quickly they're absorbed and to make our energy last longer. This is also important for helping you feel full longer because carbohydrates break down so quickly, we may feel hungrier if we have just carbohydrates without protein or fat. The portion of carbohydrates varies greatly depending on the person and depending on their exercise goals. Throughout the day, typically eating between 30 and 60 grams of carbohydrates at a meal is reasonable is a reasonable expectation for your body to handle. 
However, if you are looking to, to lose some weight or you have blood sugar control changes, that may be, um, those amounts may differ um, a little bit more, particularly in the evening. For snacks, having a 15 to 30 grams of carbohydrate snack every handful of hours can help keep your energy up and help make sure that you are getting nutrients that your body needs and can use to help you continue to propel through your day. So now we're going to look at proteins, which most people are all excited about protein when it comes to exercise. And there's good reason for that. Proteins help rebuild muscle tissue. They also help with building blocks for other types of tissues in our body, like skin and organs. So our body needs a lot of protein in order to keep up with the, all the demands of our body. We also use proteins to help with making enzymes, hormones, and transporting nutrients in and around our systems. Protein provides some energy, but it's not going to be your body's favorite fuel source. So that's why carbohydrate and protein going together can be a lot more beneficial than one versus the other. So oftentimes when we think of protein, we think chicken, maybe protein powders, maybe eggs or fish, and those are great proteins. We definitely want to stick with the leaner sources, which can include vegetarian proteins like beans, tofu, tempeh. Um, as well as animal products can be a great source of protein. Uh, yogurts, cheese, eggs, meats. Protein being eaten by itself will give you a little bit of a fullness in your stomach, but won't give you as much energy as having it with a little bit of carbohydrate. Your body also uses it better when it does have carbohydrate in the same meal. Portion size for protein can range range depending on the person, but typically is between four to eight ounces. A roughly four ounce portion of say meat or chicken would be about the size of a deck of cards. And a one ounce protein, a one ounce portion of protein has about seven grams. So typically around 20 to 30 grams of protein at a meal can be a really positive amount for your body and can help make sure that you're not overfilling yourself on protein and not leaving room for any of those great carbohydrates or fats. The last macronutrient we're going to talk about is fat. Now, fat has had a whole battery of emotions and feelings around it, unfortunately, but the, it comes down to our body does need fat. Fat provides insulation and helps transport different vitamins and minerals into our body. If we're not having any fat, we're not going to get those vitamins either. Fat's part of every cell in our body. And if we think back to biology class, each little cell has a lot of fat, which means it needs to come from somewhere. And eating healthy sources of fat can help maintain those cell membranes. Carb um, fats can help provide energy if there aren't carbohydrates around. However, in certain circumstances, it's not going to be the best source of energy for your body. So we want to have a balance of carbohydrates and fats so your body's getting energy as well as making sure you are not getting too full, uh, getting too hungry too quickly. As wonderful as fats are, we do want to be cautious about the portion size because a small amount will add a lot of calories very quickly. What, for, uh, what fat sources are going to be best for us? Now, if you've heard of keto, there are lots of different recommendations about the fat sources, but we typically want to focus on the healthiest options. Those healthier options would include avocados, nuts, seeds, oils um, from plants. Um, and it's going to be important to have a variety of different fats in your, in your uh, diet to get a different mix of vitamins and minerals that are in those foods that have fat. Because fats have so many calories in a small portion, it's important to measure them and to be conscious of how much we're using at a meal so we're not adding extra calories without adding any extra fullness. A typical portion size for fats would include a tablespoon of, say, olive oil, 
an eighth of a cup of say nuts or our salad dressing or a quarter of an avocado. It can be really eye-opening if you're new to measuring to measure fats because we oftentimes get a little heavy-handed with fats and we can increase our calories very quickly if we're not paying close attention. Alrighty, so now we're going to talk a little bit more about the amounts. Now, I've talked about the amounts at meals with carbohydrates, proteins, and fats and portion sizes, but what about over the course of the whole day? This is where um, it can be helpful to know what your calorie needs are and maybe do a little, little, a little bit of light tracking of your macronutrients or calories. The zone diet recommends about 40% of your car calories coming from carbohydrates, 30% from protein, and 30% from fat. Now that carbohydrate number could be much lower than where some people need particularly people who are very active, may need more carbohydrates than uh, people who are more sedentary. As you increase your exercise with the Couch to 5K program, there may be opportunities where you need to eat a little bit more carbohydrates, particularly around uh, more intense workouts or exercises to help get you through those workouts and feel good. If you're interested in figuring out what the calories and macro breakdown look like for you, you can use the following recommendations um, or conversions listed on the slide to help figure out how many calories and uh, how many calories and grams of fat, protein, and carbohydrates you would need for your day to day. Awesome. Now we're going to look a little bit more at the right time. Now, Meal timing is important because our bodies not only get hungry and ask for food, but our bodies use our food better when we break it up over the course of the day. Eating within an hour of waking up is typically a really great thing for our bodies and our brains because it wakes up our metabolism. It gets that, that uh, metabolism going, it gets the digestive juices going, and that helps kickstart your uh, your whole day. Eating every three to four hours over the remainder of the day can be helpful for not only maintaining your energy, but also keeping your mood and your hunger in check for the day. If you are someone who works, uh, works out in the evening or will be doing more exercise in the evening, it's especially important that you're fueling up over the course of your day to help make sure that you have enough energy to practice exercise safely. Before bedtime is a really great time to take a break from having snacks and nibblies and whatever other um, delicious things that you typically have because your body's not using as much energy right before bed and while you're sleeping as it does for the remainder of the day. So eating, eating earlier in the morning and eating every three to four hours can help make sure that you're getting what your body needs, as well as making sure that you are not feeling overstuffed or feeling super hungry at any uh, given point. Alrighty, so now we're going to look a little bit at hydration because that is a point that is a great place for a lot of people to start making changes now. So hydration is necessary for metabolism, our body membranes, and our blood. Our blood is a liquid, which means we need to have a fair amount of water coursing through it to make sure it's easy enough to move through our blood vessels. And our body uses a lot of water to break down our carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, which means if we're not drinking enough water, those foods may not be getting broken down as easily, and that may not be helping us as much as we think. We lose water and hydration through a number of ways in our body. We lose it through breathing, sweating, urination, bowel movements. And if you unfortunately um, ever vomit or have um, any other digestive issues, then you may be losing water through those avenues as well. Too little water, particularly during exercise, causes stress on your heart. Because that blood is not thin enough and there isn't enough water coursing through it, it puts extra pressure to squeeze that heart muscle and keep that blood moving. 
too little water can also impact your aerobic endurance or how, how much you can um, put into your workout and cause cramping and fatigue, which are things that no one wants to feel, particularly if you're getting really excited about doing the Couch to 5K program. We don't want something like fatigue or cramping, uh, cramping your style of getting to that finish line. There isn't a one size fits all recommendation for hydration. However, the quick method is to take your body weight and divide it by two. 50% of your body, 50% of that, your weight, but in ounces of water is a reasonable place to start. You may always need more water if you sweat a lot, if you're exercising a lot, and um, that can be assessed as you increase and have more stable and consistent water intake. So a great thing to practice right now would be to make sure you're getting adequate water and encourage your friends and family to do so as well. So some hydration sources include still water. If you like uh, plain water, either room temperature, cold or hot, go for it. Sparkling water or seltzer water, herbal teas and broths. All of these have the great water component that your body can use and absorb and doesn't have any extra junk or fillers or colors that may impact how your body feels otherwise. Fruits and vegetables are also really high in water, which makes them really that much more important to eat on a regular basis. Most people need at least five servings of fruits and vegetables total in a day. And having those fruits and vegetables come from fresh, frozen, or canned can be a great way to get a little extra water in while you're enjoying flavors of fruits and vegetables. All righty, now we're gonna switch gears and look at fueling for the exercise. Now, we're gonna start by looking at what aerobic and what anaerobic exercise are. So or aerobic exercise is the exercise that requires your heart to be pumping, but you are not as high, you're, you're not breathing as intensely as you might be at a higher pace. It means that your oxygen use is between 60 and 80% of your maximum training zone, which we can easily gauge by the quick question, can you carry on a conversation? If you could sing yourself a song or sing along with the words or give a, a, a discussion, then you are in the aerobic exercise realm. These kinds of exercise can include walking, for some people light jogging, yoga, um, or more low-key, slower moving activities. During your workout, uh, during an aerobic workout, you're going to be burning mostly fat, which is wonderful, but that fa extra fat burning is going to stop when you finish your workout. So something to keep in mind, aerobic exercise can be a wonderful way to get back into exercise or to enjoy things like the nice weather that's around. Anaerobic exercise, on the other hand, means without oxygen. So this doesn't mean that the oxygen completely disappear disappears from around you. Instead, it means that you are breathing heavily and your body is uh, has less oxygen coming in on a consistent basis. During um, anaerobic exercise, your body's going to be burning mostly sugar, or carbohydrate, and it's gonna be burning stored sugar in your body. After you finish an anaerobic workout, your body's gonna switch from burning that sugar to burning that fat. So both types of exercises require fat or provide fat burn. However, it just depends on if it's during the exercise or after. Some anaerobic exercises might be running, might be jogging for some people, as well as kickboxing, dancing, Zumba, um, or anything that requires you to breathe more intensely. Alrighty, so what about eating around exercise? I get this question a lot when I have new clients who are exercising, feeling great, but they're not sure what they should be doing when it comes to fueling. So it depends on what time of day and how you're feeling prior to exercise. 
if you're someone who likes to get up, go for your run, do go for your walk, get it out of the way first thing in the morning, you may not have to eat anything prior to doing your exercise. If you tend to fail halfway through or just have a hard time pushing yourself to finish, it's okay to have a small amount of carbohydrate and fat to give you a little extra energy and make that energy last longer throughout your exercise. An example could be a half a banana or in six cashews. If you're someone who enjoys working out later in the day or in the evening, it's important to remember that you are you need to fuel up for the entire day before you hit that exercise. Eating every three to four hours and eating something roughly three to four hours prior to your workout can help make sure that you have enough fuel in your system to get you through that workout. If you're feeling particularly hungry before that workout, it may be helpful to have a small amount of fat and carbohydrates like the banana and cashews to help propel you through the workout and make sure you're not focused on a grumbly stomach throughout the entire thing. What about during exercise? For most people, we don't need to fuel partway through our exercise because we're exercising for less than two hours at a time. So if you're someone who's exercising one to two hours, you probably don't need to have anything. However, if someone is exercising at a super high intensity or is exercising for multiple hours on end, it may be worthwhile to have a refuel somewhere in that time frame. And that's a great time. If you're thinking that might be you, that would be a great thing to reach out to a dietitian to talk to about. All righty. So right after exercise is an excellent time to refuel. Now this isn't only going to be providing you extra nutrients in your body, but it's going to help with that muscle recovery and putting back some of the sugar that was burned off during your exercise. So we want to make sure that you're having two main types of foods, protein, which most people would expect, and a carbohydrate. The purpose behind that carbohydrate is to make your blood sugar go up a little bit and help your body use and absorb those nutrients faster. Some protein options could include a clean protein shake, eggs, chicken, fish, yogurt, tofu, um, and a carbohydrate could, could include potatoes, uh, brown rice, fruit, whole grain of another sort. Um, and having some combination of these two can make your body feel a whole lot better and kickstart your day or continue your day to help feel good and fuel well. It's important to try to eat within a half hour or so of finishing your workout because your metabolism will be revved up a little bit and your body can use those nutrients better. Alrighty, we are going to be wrapping up in just a minute or so, but in summary, it's best to have a combination of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats throughout your day. A great place to start for that ratio is to have 40% carbohydrates, 30% fat, and 30% protein broken up over multiple meals and snacks. Keeping that in mind, eating every three to four hours is going to be helpful for maintaining your health throughout the whole day and maintaining your energy. Your body needs fuel all day in preparation or for recovery around your exercise. Even if you're not exercising on a particular day, it's still important to eat every three to four hours because your brain and other parts of your body are still working even if you aren't um, taxing them as much as you would during exercise. Depending on uh, when you exercise during the day, depends uh, influences what you should eat and, and when you should be eating them. We don't often burn as many calories as we think. However, it's still important to fuel properly before and after um, exercise with food and with hydration. If you're watching this presentation and you have a laundry list of questions or you have um, any concerns, please reach out to me and I'm more than happy to help you with finding what works best for you and helping make some of these recommendations more realistic in your daily life. I do have appointments available through telehealth 
And I do know that the Easter Seals Health Insurance does cover these appointments. So win-win for everyone. I'm really looking forward to seeing you at the 5K, the wrap up for the couch to 5K. And I hope to see you um, very soon. Thank you.